card. Reggie versus Eternatus <laughs> here in the finals. We're going to head down to the table and we'll take a closer look at our finalists here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlie Kerr versus Aiden Koos. Now, Aiden Koos is on the Eternatus, top 32 in Vancouver, has some top 64, you know, OCIC, NAIC, has not been, you know, in this position quite yet recently. You know, finally here in the finals after a lot of consistently strong finishes at big tournaments to have a, you know, daring play to say, I'm going to bring Eternatus, I think it's good. And to bring it this far means that he is a player that is willing to adapt to any situation. Now let's go ahead and take a look at his opponent for this finals match, Charlie Kerr. We just saw him on stream. Top 16 regionals, top 8 regionals, top 32 regionals, top 64. Mm -hmm. Finally making it into this spot where you can crown yourself champion. All you have to do is draw the right cards, take some knockouts. Despite the deck choices, when you see two players with pedigrees like this, you cannot be surprised that they're able to pilot almost anything to this position. Almost uh, 1,200 players showed up for this regional tournament, and now we've whittled it down to our final two. We're going to begin game one here in just a moment. And we know that, you know, Eternatus VMAX, a lot of the strategies they tend to go for in this matchup don't really apply. It's just going to be a slug fest, but having to take six prizes still remains to be a tall order. It is going to be all about that Galarian wheezing with its neutralizing gas ability trying to shut off the abilities from Charlie. More, most importantly, that Ancient Wisdom from Reggie Gigas. If you can't accelerate the energies, manually attaching is going to be way too slow. Aiden is going to be missing out on that Radiant Hisuian Sneasler in the prize card, so that slow tick of Glarian Weezing Severe Poison is going to be even slower. Now both players are ready. Let it, let's get our finals started. Glarian Weezing Eternatus up against Reggie Gigas and friends. And now we're starting off with coughing in the active spot and Reg Ice for Charlie Kerr in his active. Going to be starting with turn one here. Is this a quick ball about to come down? Ultra ball. Okay. <laughs> He had a 50-50 shot. <laughs> <laughs> he was discarding something. Gets rid of the ordinary ball. Oh, my God. Ordinary rod and twin en energy. And yeah, we just have to put the rest of these Reggies together. It's pretty difficult right on turn one. You have to take a look at the prizes, see what's missing, see how you're going to sculpt your game plan from here. This isn't the sort of matchup where uh, you can be very aggressive. You have to get all the Reggies in play first. You have to get the energies in the discard pile as well for the Ancient Wisdom. It does give Aiden a lot of time to try to shut this down, certainly, especially starting with coughing. This hand is pretty good from Charlie's standpoint. You're able to get four of your Pokemon in play thanks to this capture energy and that Ultra Ball. But then you have a scoop up net and a capture energy in your hand. You can scoop up net the Regice and bring up that Reggie Drago mm -hmm. and then use Dragon Sword, but you're only drawing three cards. It still might be worth it just because you know if Aiden has a Dark Energy, Ascension is going to be used and right away that Glaring Weezing is going to start taking effect. Try to get value out of your abilities now before they're shut off or try to save the scoop up nets to uh, you know, get rid of those ticks of poison damage, but indeed employs the scoop up net. Charlie Kerr wants to dig a little deeper, draws three cards, finds another quick ball. That's not bad. Uh, still not going to be able to get the full amount of your Reggie Pokemon in play, but you can set up for the next turn. And more importantly, a Barney was found off that Dragon's Horde, and that means you'll be able to draw some cards next turn. With the Glaring Weezing in the active, Aiden is also going to be shuffling and disrupting this hand a lot. So Charlie Kerr is just going to be using the resources as much as possible on this turn. It's a little bit more difficult to set up for the next turns, but this is still a fantastic setup. Only missing out on Regirock, and now it's over to Aiden Koos. Has coughing in the active with that Ascension attack. Can immediately search through the deck to get a Glaring Weezing. Also showing the boost shake in the hand. Honestly, I don't know if you play anything else. Yeah, you just Ascension, and you're good to go. And that is what Aiden has decided. Glarian Weezing now in the active spot. Neutralizing Gas will shut off Dragon Sword and that Ancient Wisdom. And Charlie's going to have to manual attach for quite a few turns. Capture Energy attached to Regigigas. This can find Regirock, and the full squad will be assembled. But now we've got Regidrago kind of stranded in the active. I'm not sure if there's a second scoop up net. Just a quick flash of the hand. 
and after the shuffle, this is where things get awkward. There's no attackers, despite Aiden only having one Pokemon in play. Yeah, we're going to see the Marnie here. It'll shuffle Aiden's big hand to the bottom of the deck and have him draw four cards, most likely. Or Ooh, actually pass. passes. There's one more scoop up net in the hand, and Charlie wants to wait for the perfect opportunity to scoop up the Reggie Drago and bring an attacker into the active spot. Yeah, this is kind of awkward for Aiden. Uh, you have the kind of perfect start you want, just Glarian Weezing. You'd love to have more Glarian Weezing, so something like a coughing and then boost shake into the Glarian Weezing so you can prevent escape rope. But it's looking like Charlie's hand isn't so good as well, and we're just passing back. Maybe the scoop up net will be utilized to full effect here. Yeah, Reggie Drago just taking additional damage thanks to severe poison. Four damage counters every turn. And after the Ultra Ball, discarding the Eternatus and the Drapion gets another coughing. And now we have that double glaring wheezing strategy you were talking about, Jeremy. And again, there's usually only one escape rope in these Reggie lists, but you still have to play around it. And then Boost Shake. This was already in the opening hand. This allows you to immediately evolve that coughing, even though it was benched this turn. Grab that wheezing, put it down, and... In exchange, your turn immediately ends, but Aiden Koos doesn't need to do anything else from this position. And this is great because you already attacked. It's already poisoned. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get any more value of doing anything else, and this is the perfect time to do it. So now Reggie Drago, severely poisoned, taking a lot of damage, still barely hanging on in the active spot. This is the moment where Charlie Kerr wants to go for scoop up net. All right, we're, we're getting uh, some assurances on if you draw for the turn, just because these turns were going by pretty quick. Just draw a pass, draw a pass. Mm -hmm. And so Scoop Up Net does bring Reggie Drago back to the hand. Reggie Steele is promoted into the active. We get the rebench there. Still neutralizing gas is online, folks. No ancient wisdom here. Reggie Steele is just going to be holding things down in the active spot. It's back over to Aiden with the severe poison and then passes it right back. This is going to be a slow grind indeed, Jeremy, of just poison after poison. So many scoop up nets have already been used. Charlie Kerr has nothing to do on this turn as well. And honestly, all Charlie needs is energy. You need to get those energy attached every turn so you can power up this Regigigas and get an attack off. Regigigas is one of those Regi Pokemon that can actually one hit KO a Glarian Weezing. It does 150 damage. And finally, an Aurora energy off the top. So finally, with the Aurora energy, we've got a scoop up net after discarding the Reggie Rock to pay for that cost. Reggie Steel goes to the back to the hand. Uh, Reggie one thing Drago. Though, to point out, you need that Reggie Rock in. Oh no, the Reggie Rock was discarded with the Aurora energy. Okay, we're mm -hmm. good. We're good. Yeah, so there's still one on the bench. Reggie Drago comes to the active. Dragon's Horde is still neutralized by the gas. The Gigaton Break needs five energy in order to be used, so still a lot of manual attachments to go before he can leave the bench and start swinging. It's a slow start indeed. Temple of Sinnoh complicating things even further. Now these special energy are only going to provide a single colorless energy if Charlie Kerr was hoping to get an attack next turn using that uh, twin, twin energy. energy. Yeah, unfortunately it, did discard a twin energy to start this game off. Mm. So only has access to one left in the deck. And usually you want those in the discard. But because of neutralizing gas, it's a little bit awkward. Now, thanks to Temple of Sinnoh coming through, Boss's orders being employed now by Aiden can choose a bench Pokemon to bring it up. Decides on Regigigas is going to bring this into the active spot and start to get that poison ticking. Charlie Kerr is on a very specific clock now to get the attachments onto Regigigas before the poison takes hold. Path of the Peak will bump the Temple of Sinnoh and Marnie comes through. The hands go to the bottom of the deck. Charlie Kerr will draw five and Aiden Koos will draw four. Energy Lotto is a huge card. Being able to dig further for that twin energy. Seven cards. No. Only gets a couple gift energy offered up. Probably take the Aurora here. Uh, you have one in hand, one on the Regigigas. And with the, double, with the double wheezing in play, if Charlie Kerr were to find that escape rope, you can just bring up another wheezing, keep that neutralizing gas permanently active. Now, with Aiden benching that Crobat V and four Seal Stone, 
on the last turn. It is kind of an insurance against uh, just trying to get set up, you know, for mm -hmm. Stone, find the card you need. You can maybe boss's orders again. It does. Oh, yeah, I didn't liability. catch that. He already did use that uh, for Seal Stone immediately. Uh, no, I, I don't think he used it yet. Uh, but, oh, he did use it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't catch that. Like you said, Jeremy, <laughs> these turns have been just going back and forth really quick because this is a matchup of setup. Once yeah. you get established in the way you need to be, you just, well, you're poisoned, <laughs> and that's all I need to do for my turn. But Aiden was really sensing the threat of that Regigigas and mm -hmm. its Gigaton break, because if you only have two Glaring and Weezing in play, it takes a lot of turns for the Regigigas, or for, or it doesn't take a lot of turns for the Regigigas to actually take a knockout. And another manual attachment. Even though we've got Path to the Peak in play, the Temple of Sinnoh not getting rid of the Twin Energies effect, we have to start pivoting to our next. Ooh, and this is the liability I was talking about. Having the Crobat V in play opens up the Serena and the boss's orders in Charlie's deck. So now you have access to all your abilities, and we're going to see this game blown wide open. So now we get to switch Crobat V into the active with Serena's ability and then Dragon's Horde to draw four cards. Ancient Wisdom putting special energy onto the Reggie Drago, and we can get a big hit on the Crobat V for two prizes. One has to wonder if that was the best route to go with that boss's orders, because now you're definitely on the back foot if you're Aiden. Galarian Weezing's going to be locking down, but now that we have the attachments on the Reggie Drago, we saw that, especially without Radiant Hisui and Sneasler, the Severe Poison isn't fast enough to take down a Reggie before it gets a couple more swings off. And every time Aiden... Pr benches another Pokemon to have some utility or present a diversified threat, it becomes a liability. There is only one Serena, however, in Charlie Kerr's list, but getting two prizes and a Pokemon set up finally in the active is probably all he can ask for. Still has access to one boss's orders, so we'll have to see if that will be the deciding factor in trying to use Ancient Wisdom yet again. And before when the turns were going a lot faster. Now oh, that no. Charlie is getting a bit more of an advantage, Aiden has to think much harder about how to approach this situation. There's a draw for turn. Energy Lotto, seven cards now from the top to find an energy card to add to the hand. This is not looking good, though, because this Reggie Drago, uh, Reggie Drago will mm -hmm. be able to attack, take the knockout on the Glaring Weezing, 160 damage with its giant fangs. And that means... E it. It'll still survive a poison turn coming back in, mm -hmm. and you can just not care about it. Take the knockout. If Aiden doesn't have another Pokemon down, that's it. And then as you continue to bench more and more Pokemon, those are just uh, going to potentially get brought up by boss's orders, turning off that neutralizing gas, giving Charlie Kerr a potential of using Ancient Wisdom to set up an additional Reggie attacker to just keep this attack train going. There's the knockout. A third prize for Charlie Kerr and Aiden Koos's final Galarian Weezing is promoted to the active spot. One thing I guess that uh, Aiden was planning for, he fetched for that Galarian Zigzagoon so you can get the Reggie Drago knocked out into uh, Charlie's turn. So there's no threat for that Giant Fangs. Beautiful. So after that ping from the Zigzagoon, Reggie Drago goes down. That's one Reggie gone. Even if this Galarian Weezing leaves the active, we have to somehow find another Drago to get Ancient Wisdom back online. Reggie Alecki promoted to the active. I think we're going to see a Speed Lightning here on the active. Draw a couple cards. You can ping for 20 with Static, static Shock. Yeah, just and this will be the Battle of Chip Damage. Just a little bit goes a long way. Poison versus Static Shock. We only need one manual attachment. Looks for the quick ball here, discarding a Marnie, which is huge. That uh, supporter disrupting hands, drawing you more cards. Tells us that Charlie Kerr is very confident in the current hand. And with the Reggie Drago being refetched, rebenched, the setup is once again completed. This Galarian Weezing has everything riding on it in this first game. If this Speed Lightning finds the boss's orders, Charlie will have this game wrapped up. Does not look like it, though. Close with those two big draws, Reggie Drago, and then Static Shock, 20 damage. It's back over to Aiden, 
And then after considering the way this turn is going to play out, another coughing, trying to get another wheezing, we're going to be sending it right back over to Charlie Kerr with severe poison here soon. The thing about uh, Glaring Wheezing Eternatus as a deck, though, it only plays three Glaring Wheezing. No way to recover them. After this one in the active gets knocked out, Aiden's just going to have one more to rely, to s rely on to seal the game. Mm -hmm. And Charlie Kerr's done a wonderful job of still keeping up the pressure despite having no access, almost no access, to Ancient Wisdom this game. It seems to be, you know, the bread and butter of the Reggie deck. Here comes Escape Rope. Charlie Kerr promotes first. But we can see Aiden is really just going to put this po coughing back into the active spot to use its Ascension attack. Again, this will protect yourself against Escape Rope if it's played by Charlie. Having two Galarian Weezing in play. And Charlie just consulting, you know, which Reggie is the safest to send up and decides on Reggie Gigas. After coughing, goes into the active, got an oh, ultra ball. I think the coughing was just played this turn. Was it? No. Yeah, um, it, was, it was played and attached. He's using Ascension here. No, he ultra balled for the Glarian Weezing. What was he? Yeah, what is he ultra balling for yeah, here? He, he needed to Ascension right now. I thought he was going to Ultra Ball before he Ascensioned. Maybe he Ultra Ball failed the search and then Ascension, but no. He, yeah, he, he played the coughing down for this turn and already started shuffling. I think he's forced to keep that Galarian Weezing in hand. Yeah, so the players are just getting it sorted out with the judges because you can Ultra Ball search and fail. Yeah, yeah. And it's just a matter of whether or not this is properly announced. It's just because you, we can see here on the screen, you you uh, you just search your deck for the, the, the thing Galarian is, Weezing. though, if they feel that he grabbed the Glaring Weezing mm -hmm. with Ultra Ball, that's going to be in hand. You won't have another Glaring Weezing in deck to Ascension to. Exactly. You have to search your deck for the Weezing to use Ascension to grab it. All right, All right, so now it's going to be a little bit of change of plans. You're going to have to retreat this coughing no, to the Galarian Weezing yeah. on the bench because if you don't have that neutralizing gas in the active, you are not shutting off that Ancient Wisdom from Charlie. Mm, so the coughing just has to manually retreat. So this is rough. At the very least, you can get that Weezing back, maybe with the Dark Patch, get that Darkness Energy back on, but we're just going to verify. It looks like the Galarian Weezing is going to go to the hand. Yep. There is, again, it's just about that small part of the wording where it needs to still be in the deck. And we've actually seen in the past, Jeremy, where these Galarian Weezing decks will brick because you draw oh, all your Oh, trust Galarian me, Weezing. I know. I know. <laughs> There's multiple times where I'd have to Marnie my own Galarian Weezings in hand just so I can Ascension into them in the same turn. Yeah, so there is the retreat as you predicted. So we still have a Galarian Weezing in the active spot. Reggie Gigas goes down. Yeah, thanks, to the Severe Poison. Yeah, thanks to uh, using Severe Poison for the turn. Reggie Gigas only had 30 HP left. That means it's the knockout. Aiden now down to four prize cards. But it seems like Charlie is very much in control of this game. Yeah, Speed yeah. Lightning. This is another window of opportunity escape to use boss, off the boss top. orders. And the Escape Rope. The Beautiful. Escape Rope has to seal the game up here. You're going to be able to take a knockout and charge up another Reggie Pokemon. Yep, so there's the escape rope. And this is the play Aiden was trying to prevent with getting two Galarian Weezing in play. Just an unfortunate missequence. And with that escape rope, this is another attack. No neutralizing gas. And this yep. is a fantastic window of opportunity to get multiple Reggie set up. Aiden is going to have to scoop this one. Yeah, it is very hard to come back from that point. And when you're playing against this uh, Reggie Gigas deck, you have to utilize those three glaring Weezings as best as possible because mm -hmm. those are your lifeline for the matchup. Yeah, each glaring Weezing has to take two prizes before <laughs> it clocks out. And Charlie Kerr just playing the matchup very uh, respectfully. You know, knowing when to promote the Reggies, knowing exactly when to employ the scoop up nets, we could actually see this game be entirely one-sided. You know, Charlie Kerr gets like two scoop-up nets in the prize cards or something like that, or Aiden gets two wheezing in the prize cards. It's going to go 
really south, really fast. And Charlotte Kerr now up one game in the finals here in Charlotte Regional Championships. Got to be feeling great. We know that Reggie's is really favored in this matchup simply because the onus is on Aiden to get set up to prevent the Ancient Wisdom. And once that's online, Charlie Kerr has to, you know, hope that the clock, the poison timer, is enough to find those resources. If Aiden can get the Radiant Usui and Sneasler, which was missing from the formula in game one, that severe poison is going to be ticking down even faster. Yeah, really missing that extra damage boost from that ability. And it allowed Charlie to just survive a few turns with early scoop up nets. Didn't play the Marnie in hand just because you had three scoop up nets. You're like, I, I don't want to get rid of them and played it at the perfect time, found a Serena off the Marnie, and then eventually escape rope off of a Speed Lightning. Having the escape rope, the Serena, and the boss's orders lines up so beautifully in dealing with each wheezing. And oh no, there's one in the prize cards it's for rough. Aiden. Yeah. So that means that each wheezing has to do much more heavy lifting. Three prizes each. Aiden starts with the coughing in the active spot. This is also a great blessing where you don't have an Eternatus V or something stranded there. Starting things off with that Hisuian heavy ball. Looking through the prizes, finds Reggie Alecki. Gets to shuffle those prizes back up, including the Hisuian heavy ball, and put those back down. After finding that basic Pokemon, there is a path to the peak, an Ultra Ball. The twin energy is also a little rough if you are forced into that manual attaching line of play for the Regigigas. This hand seems stellar from Charlie. A few Reggie Pokemon and then something like a Capture Energy or Speed Lightning, I believe. And just figuring out what Reggies are missing, you know, how I want to approach this matchup. There are no more in the prize cards, as Charlie just saw. Everything is in the deck and at uh, willing to be employed right now. Just figuring out, okay, what's the sequence? Thinking about discarding a Reggie Lecky to a quick ball. It's, it's awkward. Uh, you kind of want the draw from Speed Lightning, but mm, you also the need scoop the, up net. the Reggie Drago to draw a couple more cards this turn. And mm. then you started that escape rope, and that's something you want to see maybe turn two, <laughs> and not turn one. Yeah, so discarding the scoop up net means that Charlie Kerr is recognizes, right? The coughing has to ascend. Um, if there's a boost shake, then that's also no poison coming down within the next turn or two. So the scoop up net doesn't need to be utilized right away. It is prioritizing the card draw over the reactivity. Reggie Drago is found from the quick ball. Hopefully we'll be able to get this into the active spot soon, draw some cards with Dragon's Horde. And who knows, if Aiden misses a beat here in the early game, that means that Ancient Wisdom will start to pop off. Speed Lightning attached to Reggie Lecky to draw two more. That was another quick ball I saw, and one other card. I, I do feel like you should probably Speed Lightning first if you're going to do it anyway. That way you can keep that scoop up net in hand. Mm-hmm. Granted, it might not matter with the escape rope. You're going to be able to get a pretty good turn two, depending on if you can get those energies in the discard. And <laughs> as I say all that, they're going straight to the bottom of the deck. Yeah, Aiden had the Galarian Weezing in hand, is going to use Marnie to put that down into the deck and then draw five oh, new no. cards. A bunch of Pokemon V Ultra Ball. That means you're going to have to discard these, get a Crobat, and try to draw into a Dark Energy. And, and that e means it's a liability on the bench. Yeah, and when you use that dark asset, you're looking for the darkness energy for Ascension, but there's a chance you draw back into that Galarian Weezing. Don't, don't put that it. into the universe, Adam. If anything, Eternatus is a self-cursing deck. It bricks in new and inventive ways that we never right, thought good. were possible. Except uh, we didn't find the, the dark energy. <laughs> <laughs> so we do have the Radiant Asui and Steezler, which is not the right time to oh, use it here. Oh, no. This is not what you want to see. Down a game in the finals in a matchup where it is very winnable. Yeah, there is eight energy in total for this deck. One in the prizes. Very high chance of getting what you need. But now the bench is full. We have a coughing stranded in the active. This means that there's a very high chance of getting Ancient Wisdom up and running this turn. Top seven with Energy Lotto looking for an energy card. Oh, finds Aurora. Perfect. Aurora energy. 
is one piece of the puzzle down. Now we'll need just one more and a couple more energies in the discard. You can start attacking with anything you want. If I'm remembering correctly, I believe Charlie Kerr does have a quick ball. Oh, uh, well, it got shuffled away, so I'm not oh, sure. Oh, that's right, off the Marnie. Right, right, right. Oh, he, he does have a quick oh, ball. Oh, you, you just have Reggie the Reggie Rock. Rock. It's totally fine. And a Professor's Research. What a hand off that Marnie. And that always feels so bad. When you use the Marnie to fix your own awkward hand situation and your opponent draws into this beautiful sequence of getting the Reggie Rock that was missing from this ensemble into the Professor's Research. Charlie just needed to find one energy, I believe, and a way to get out of the active. And found the energy, but no way to get out of the active. So I think we won't see an attack here from that Reggie Alecki. I love the preparation here. Just attaches the gift energy to the Reggie Gigas. Uses Ancient Wisdom for one to get that Aurora energy back. And also preps the Reggie Rock with the Choice Belt, trying to respond to potentially an Eternatus VMAX. So Aiden... Kind of got away with a little, a little turn there, you know? Bought some time, has the Galarian wheezing now. Still needs energy to get Severe Poison online, but another important aspect is getting a second Galarian wheezing in play. Yep, so there is the Ultra Ball to find Galarian wheezing. Discarded the Dark Patch. No Ascension, just a manual evolution here onto the wheezing, but because there is no energy still, that means there's no severe poison. Even though you're stopping the Ancient Wisdom, there's still not enough energy in play for any of these Reggies to attack just yet. You aren't putting a clock on your opponent with that poison. One more Marnie, five more cards. One of these has to be an energy. You'd think that, but uh, this oh. deck very often does not draw energy when you need it. We're gonna have to rely on another Crobat, most likely. <laughs> There is one more <laughs> slot on the bench. So yeah, there's the quick ball discarding a judge. We found all the energies. They're at the bottom of the deck. And I guess one at the top. <laughs> oh no. It was one card away. Oh no. And after seeing that, the Crobat is being looked at here. But now there's so many Pokemon on the bench for Charlie Kerr to use the Serena, to use the boss's orders, the escape rope, to get around this neutralizing gas. There's Dark Asset for three. Uh, no. And this is <laughs> yeah, yeah. He gets yeah. it off the Crobat. He didn't bench it. He's just putting it down. Hey, I'm revealing this. Going to use the Temple of Sinnoh in order to uh, you know, thin the hand down a little bit more. All right. I'm going to say it before you curse Aiden, but there is a possibility of drawing the Hiding Darkness energy as the only energy and not being able to attack because of the Temple of Sinnoh. All right. We got a Forest Seal Stone. It's all good. Still no energy, though, so you're going to have to use <laughs> that V-Star. <laughs> For an energy card. Aiden is showing us a magnificently low percentage here. There's, uh, some, there's somebody here that could calculate. I think this is maybe the first time I've ever seen Forest Seal Stone for an energy card, but it needs to be done. We need severe poison in order to put on any modicum of threat here. And Aiden doing all this just to potentially get serena or a boss's order or something next turn. All right, Forest I wonder Seal what he's Stone. getting. Oh, man, I wonder what that card could be. Charlie Kerr wonders to himself out loud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's an energy. And there we go. Galarian Weezing now prepped and ready to go with severe poison. A lot of work to get four damage counters down. Oh, but Radiant Hatsui and Sneasler. And so you get six oh, here. Oh, six now, yes. Let's go. I love the roaring applause from the audience <laughs> for Aiden finally finding an energy. That was a struggle. That is the destined <laughs> energy. This Galarian Weezing already has its work cut out for it. We know that there's one at the top of the prize cards. So this Galarian Weezing needs to take down three Reggies. A little awkward hand here from Charlie. Has the escape rope and the boss's orders, but the Professor Research in hand as well. So we might see a Scape Rope get out of the Galarian Weezing and then research the hand away. Hope to find some energies to get an attack off. Yeah, I don't think there's actually that many special energies in the discard pile. We saw the Ancient Wisdom only for one Aurora. So it's Professor's Research into, you know, drawing those energies, hopefully into an Ultra Ball or more Quick Balls or something to discard them. Perhaps even a manual attachment, Aurora discarding an Aurora. 
And now you have to wonder what Charlie wants to bring up with the escape rope. Possibly that Reggie Alecki. Uh, one more energy, you can retreat it and then charge up someone else. Potentially that Reggie Gigas. Okay, so there's the attach for turn for the capture energy. Has no effect because of Temple of no, Sinnoh. Just 20. And there it is, the uh, static shock, was it? Yep. Onto the Crobat V, and now we're back over to Aiden. Put a shock to your system, and Crobat is uh, still stuck in the active. I'm still shocked of how hard <laughs> it was to find one darkness energy in this deck. Well, listen, we need to do it again. So <laughs> we need to retreat. <laughs> we got to find another energy, and the bench is full. We do have the Eternus VMAX to turn on that Eternal Zone, get some more bench space. For a Seal Stone, just to be emptied out of the hand, a big Parasol emptying the hand down further. There's no energy for this potential Ascension on the coughing. There's no energy for Dread End yet. One Dark Patch was already discarded to an Ultra Ball. This is going to be a big judge. Four cards coming up. Probably going to miss the energy. Have to Crobat V yet again. Oh, <laughs> this is, we're just tag teaming this caster curse right now, Jeremy. This is I, why just... Eternatus VMAX has struggled so much in this metagame. Even though it looks so strong on paper, it bricks in ways oh. that are just incomprehensible. <laughs> I'm sorry, Aiden. <laughs> I, I just know this deck so well. I know the draws that it yeah, has. You, right? you are just feeling the pain right <laughs> along with Aiden Coos here. Down one game in the finals. Brought the deck all the way to this moment. 11-1-3. You know there were so many hard-fought battles over the course of 15 Swiss rounds. Almost 1,200 players showed up to this event. Even has the echoing horn in there as some spice. But grabs the Crobat V. There's enough... Bench space now in the eternal zone for another dark asset. Drawing up to six. This is drawing. Oh, wait, there's two Galarian Zigzagoons as well in the hand, so we can <laughs> make even more room. So the bench goes up to eight slots, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, but that still, that still works with the static shock. It's colorless. Yeah, okay, cool, cool. All right. All right. Yeah, no possible way you can miss it again. We found some. <laughs> there <laughs> they are. Energies, energies everywhere. There's the attached return. Has the switch. It's just like and the evolution into the Galarian Weezing. And the switch. Beautifully done. Neutralizing gas is back online. And the severe poison onto Reggie Alecki. Scoop up net off the top for Charlie is going to be huge here because the Reggie Alecki would be knocked out going in to Aiden's turn if nothing else was done. So this also takes away that extra opportunity that Charlie Kerr had in the first game, right? With the poison not hitting for 60, you had that one extra turn of being able to stabilize, draw an extra card, wait for that scoop up net. But now Charlie Kerr has to be much more responsive. Goes for energy lotto here. The missing piece of Charlie Kerr's puzzle is the fact that there aren't a lot of special energies in the discard pile. All the Reggies are assembled, but no way to capitalize. Just picks up a gift energy. Maybe see it attached to that Reggie Gigas. Just charge it up for the following turn. And from there, you can get things going. Yep, slowly but surely manually attaching to Reggie Gigas. This, is, uh, this reminds me of one time I was under neutralizing gas lock and I was manually attaching to Cramorant. And it's, <laughs> it's not a good time where you can't attack and you're just attaching, attaching while your Pokemon are going down to the poison. Charlie Kerr promotes Reg Ice, goes back over to Aiden. Neutralizing gas, popping off. Boss's orders to bring up the Reggie Gigas. This, this is, is the same thing that happened in game one. But now you have that 60 damage, so it's going to put a bigger clock on that Reggie Gigas and force Charlie to, yeah, you're going to attack with it, but it'll eventually go down. Aurora energy attached. Gigaton break being used. One Weezing goes down. The second Weezing's promoted. Reggie Gigas taking six more damage in between turns. Hiding dark energy onto Eternatus VMAX. And severe, well, yeah, you don't even need to use severe poison. It's already poisoned. And Radiant Hisui and Sneasel are doing a lot of work. You can see the accelerated pace of these Reggies going down is so important. And Charlie Kerr, from this point, uses Path to the Peak. Temple of Sinnoh now bumped. All of these special energies are back online. Had the second Reggie Gigas in hand, so Ancient Wisdom is also ready to go. Well, 
as soon as soon as uh, we find the escape rope or a boss or something to get this Galarian Weezing well, out of the active. We're, we're going to find it with this electromagnetic sonar with the <laughs> Reggie Alecki that most people describe as the bad Alecki. It's the good Alecki. I must tell you that. When the matchup calls for it, this is going to be so huge. After adding that key card to the hand, it's going to go down to the bottom of the deck thanks to Marnie. This is how these Weezing Flock decks function. Not only are you keeping the poison up and ticking and keeping that consistent pressure and negating those abilities, you're also disrupting the hand at the same time. Because of Path to the Peak, Radiant Hisuian's Kneezler's Poison Peak is offline, so now Severe Poison is also only hitting for 40. Which is huge because the Reggie Alecki has 130 HP. Mm -hmm. That means if nothing's done, it's going to take another turn to actually get knocked out. And if you give this, this Reggie deck an extra turn of draw, that's also an extra turn to be able to manually attach to these Ooh. Reggies and set it up. There's the Serena, however, brings up Crobat V, turns Ancient Wisdom back on, and there's plenty of energy in the discard pile to attach. And of course, with the twin energy on that Reggie Alecki, we'll be able to retreat it if Charlie wants to, but you can just bring up that Serena back to your hand, that boss's orders, and do the same play next turn. Uh, sonar? And goes for the Sonar, getting another tool to put back into the hand, potentially shuffled back into the deck by another Marnie or Judge from Aiden's side. Just double checking here, you get any trainer card you like from your discard pile. I'd like that one, please. Serena is the pull. Back into the hand. Another supporter, a way to get around the Galarian Weezing. One more tick of poison. Thanks to the Path to the Peak, Reggie Alecki still survives. Aiden has Crobat V in the active spot. There was a lot of energies prior. We're going to bump this with the Temple of Sinnoh. And this is the perfect turn for Aiden. Has the Stadium Bump that turns on that Radiant Hisuian Sneasler and a way to disrupt the hand. So the Serena goes to the bottom of the deck thanks to the Marnie. And you actually get the knockout going into Charlie's turn on this Reggie Alecki. No way for Charlie Kerr to respond. Aiden is going to take one more prize in this trade. And here's the Galarian Zigzagoon being considered. I think for a second you were like, oh, I need this tunnel vision. I'm only doing 40. But no, you have that Radiant Hisuian Sneasler active right now. So decides to grab that after all. No need to ping can save this to set up some damage down the road. We have a damaged Reggie Steel as well. So this is just another prize that you can take. There's the attached return onto the Crobat V to retreat into Galarian Weezing. There's the Severe Poison ticking up along with the Radiant Hisuian Sneasler. Players at the table just making that quick calculation and Reggie Alecki goes down. Reggie Steel now promoted into the active. It's taken a little bit of damage, but it is not poisoned at the very least. With Manual attachment to Reggie Gigas now. And with 70 on that Reggie Steel, it's going to be knocked out coming into Charlie's turn yet again. But that's kind of what Charlie wants because then you bring up the Reggie Gigas, get a free knockout. The Glaring Weezing, you know, it has a strong presence in the active spot, but there's also a vulnerability there to being in the active. Because Reggie Steel is not poisoned, Charlie Kerr does have this window of opportunity to just make a, a solid play and Reggie Steel will finally go down. Just a quick draw, severe poison, pass. Radiant Suey and Sneasler doing so much work. Like, it's a massive difference from the first yes. game where it was stuck in the prizes. Uh, it, it makes the matchup a lot more winnable for you. If not, your opponent is going to scoop up net you out of the game. And so now with another manual attachment on this Reggie Gigas, it is up and ready to attack, but Charlie Kerr thinking about what is the least valuable it, know, it, card it's in my awkward. hand. You kind of want all three of these cards. Ordinary Rod is one of those cards that will be able to get those Reggie Pokemon that have been KO'd and discarded throughout this entire game. You also have Pat to the Peak to shut off that Eternal Zone. Mm, discards and, the Marnie. Wow. That, I like that choice. It, it's a choice for sure. You use the Ordinary Rod now to put the Reggies back in your deck, the ones that are missing. And from this point, the... You know, you have to be a little bit daring. You're thinking, okay, well, I'm going down to a dead hand, an empty hand, and now Aiden doesn't want to judge or Marnie. So if Aiden, Aiden doesn't have a good response to this wheezing going down, uh, 
then uh, he won't be able to use those supporter cards to shuffle and have Charlie draw more cards as well. So I think that perhaps the Eternatus VMAX should be in a great position here. However, I do see now the Regirock has been sitting and lurking down in the corner yep. with that choice spell. <laughs> it is a scary Pokemon for sure. Aiden will be forced to attack with this Eternatus VMAX. Yeah. And I believe with the bench now, five Pokemon times three, that's 150. And that is enough to take the knockout on the Regigigas. But you have no Galarian Weezing, so full abilities for Charlie. But with the Temple of Sinnoh, we'll need to actually bump that to maybe take the knockout with that Regirock. So after that... Uh, bump of the stadium, just going to take the KO with Dread and Aiden Koos. Now two prizes remaining. Charlie Kerr Professor's trying to respond. research off the top. We thought that, you know, Charlie Kerr was going to be in a really bad position after having to discard that Marnie, but it pays off. Big Professor's research here. Wait, no, Ultra Ball. Yeah, Ultra Ball, discard the hand. Mm -hmm. Professor's research is the last card. And you just need to find the rest of your Pokemon. Maybe an Ordinary Rod. Or, no, I think that was played the prior turn. Mm -hmm. So now Reggie Gigas is grabbed off of the Ultra Ball. We have to find Reggie Steel and Reggie Alecki to get Ancient Wisdom back online. Galarian Weezing is now completely out of the equation. We have to now try to take either take down this Eternatus VMAX for three prizes and then one more single, or try to get around it and maybe knock out these Crobat Vs. With the way the board is, though, you do need a scoop up net as well to get out of the active. Big seven cards here for Charlie. And let's see it. So much suspense, so much riding on this situation of Charlie Kerr isn't able to respond to the Eternatus VMAX. Aiden's just going to go down to one prize remaining and carry us to a game number three. Taking a look at the hand, I don't think... Yeah, there's no way to get out of the active spot, so we might not have the attack here. You can escape rope. I, I believe that is in hand, so... Okay. So Can we escape rope, other... Aiden just maybe brings up the coughing or the Galarian Zigzagoon. Oh, yep, nope, scooping, going to game three. Did not have the Reggie Pokemon to complete the setup with Ancient Wisdom during that turn. And somehow Aiden escapes that game two, missing energies for turn after turn. Dug through the entire deck, finally had a Forest Seal Stone <laughs> for a basic Dark Energy. Pulled Absolutely it out. wild, yes. You have to fight tooth and nail when your back is against the wall. Even when your deck isn't responding to the cards you need, you've got to brute force it. Forest Seal Stone for one Darkness Energy and the Radiant Hisuian Sneasler doing a lot of heavy lifting in that game. What I really liked as well was Charlie Kerr was just using that Electromagnetic Sonar to get the Serena, to get the escape rope. And every time a strong card was put in his hand, Aiden just denied that with Marnie, with Judge. Shuffle that back in, get, getting rid of those outs. Playing this deck that's, you know, we talk about so much, and turn it as VMAX, he turned it as VMAX, but this is Galarian Weezing's show. Yeah, and we'll have to see if it will be able to finish it off. On a good note, the winner of this next game will be our Charlotte Masters TCG Regional Champion. And both of these players have been hunting for that win. Is it going to be Regigigas? Is it going to be Galarian Weezing? We're going to have to see. And either way, these are two, like, you know, pseudo rogue decks. Reggie's has been in the meta, been mixing it up as just a solid, you know, my matchups are pretty good against everything kind of deck. And when you see something just come out of the woodwork, like this Galarian Weezing, Eternatus VMAX, it tests your knowledge of the rest of the metagame. Three path to the peak being put in the prizes for Charlie That Kerr is uh, not good. The stadium that is going to stick is certainly Temple of Sinnoh, but Aiden losing out on Forest Seal Stone and two energy, his track record shows that <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be a lot stronger of an implication for how this third match is going to go. And uh, this hand is actually perfect for Aiden here. Has the coughing with the quick ball, boost shake, and a switch. No energy, but who needs it? Boost shake coming out and having Galarian wheezing. Turn one, you have no abilities. Let's go. Boost shake, turn one, your turn ends. It doesn't matter. The strategy comes together. We've got Galarian wheezing, neutralizing gas up and running. Charlie Kerr has the fourth path to the peak in hand. 
but not much else going on. There is a Marnie here, a couple Reggies, an Aurora. So there are some options still available, but with no Ancient Wisdom, even if you get the Reggies all lined up in a row, you have no offense just yet. It's actually a little awkward because Charlie would love to play this hand down with both quick balls, discard the paths of the peak. But if you opt to do that one first, it's going to be a very rude surprise when you go through and check your deck. And I think that, you know, any player would just be like, oh, you know, path to the peak, it's fine. Ooh, actually kicks the quick ball. What a heads up play from Charlie here. Just going to shuffle that back in. I haven't had a chance to see what my deck is like, so I'm just going to take a play that just draws me cards without having to give up too severe of a resource. Pulls Reggie Steel and Reggie Ice off of the Marnie. And, now and then can go for Reggie for Gate. That Reggie Drago. Reggie Gate, search your deck for a basic Pokemon so you can find the missing Reggie. Having the Aurora as well to go through and complete this turn was fantastic. So now all the Reggies are in a row, but still no special energy in the discard pile for Ancient Wisdom if Charlie Kerr can get around this Galarian Weezing. Aiden's going to need to draw some energy. I think I see one in hand. Thank goodness. I really don't well, want to see. Maybe. It, it was, you know, we don't want to see a struggle that like we saw in game number two, right? There's the yeah. energy. We've got a quick ball here. Massive window of opportunity as well to get the severe, severe poison up and running or to also increase the threat of another Galarian Weezing. Decides not to employ the quick ball here. He's going to let this first Galarian Weezing just rock and severe poison. Strikes the Reggie Rock for 40 damage. Not a good hand here for Charlie this game. Three couple energy, Reg Ice, and a choice belt. And once again, this slow but sure manual attachment to the Reggie Gigas to have another attacker that can take down the Galarian Weezing in one blow is starting to get ticked up. Here's another manual attachment to the Galarian Zigzagoon. So you have that pivot option. And then just passes the turn. 120 now on the Regirock. We don't have a scoop up net just yet. It looks like there's yeah. an attached return. This is looking a lot like game one. But the one difference is Charlie had all those scoop up nets and was holding on to the Marnie. Now Charlie has everything just on the field. Doesn't really have much else. Attaches the energy each turn. And just passes back, gets the Reggie Rock knocked out thanks to the poison. And it's just going to be all of the other Reggies lining up into the active spot. And here's another play we've seen in game one and in game two. The Reggie Gigas is getting energies attached to it, and Aiden tries to head that off with the boss's orders and getting the poison down on it. Aurora Energy grabbed. We can attach this to discard another. But the rest of the hand is just kind of dead. No supporter here. Oh, wait, is that a Marnie? Oh, my gosh. He drew a Marnie for the turn. This is a sign of life for Charlie. So plays the Aurora Energy down, discards the Choice Belt, and has a Marnie. We want to try to get something here, an escape rope, to get the Galarian Weezing out of the active spot. Five big cards here. Reggie Rock Escape Rope. Can we make it happen? Energy Lotto. Seven more cards from the top. Speed Lightning being offered up as an energy here or another Aurora. So that can be added to the hand. I don't think I saw the Escape Rope, however. Reggie Gigas does have a little bit of time still in the active spot before the poison takes its toll. Yep, attachment for the turn already happened before the Marnie. So just passing back 80 damage on that Reggie Gigas now. Aiden's going to be forced to Crobat V here, I believe. Yeah, the Galarian Weezing or has done a lot of work, but just goes for the Ultra Ball to get another Weezing. Excuse me, a coughing. <laughs> Never mind. Aiden drew a Judge for the turn, so all good. Beautiful. Into the Judge. Temple of Sinnoh also hitting the stage. Means that that Twin Energy, once again, not providing any help for the Regigigas. Now just providing a single colorless. And Charlie Kerr, off of this Judge, shuffles the hand. Has to draw into a scoop up net here. Or path to the, the one path to the peak and an energy. Only one path. The 
Three other Patch to the Peaks are in the prize card, so this stadium bump is going to be a long shot, Jeremy. Aiden now has the choice. You can Dark Patch to the coughing, but I think that's pretty much it. Passes the turn back, and this Reggie Giggs is Professor's do Research, something. okay. I can't see what the rest of the hand is, but at least we have that supporter. Boss's orders in hand. Going to go for the Ordinary Rod first. Putting that Regirock back into the deck. Just increasing the chances of drawing into it. This might mean Charlie is going to try to go for the Professor's Research. We're looking for what? Professor's Research, we need that uh, Pat to the Peak to come through to bump that Temple of Sinnoh. Here's another attachment of the Aurora Energy to the Regigigas in the active. Even if we are able to get around this Galarian Wheezing, the Regigigas will remain poisoned and will go down this turn. All right, Adam, we need that one Pat to the Peak in this hand. It does not look like Charlie got it. Yeah, I saw the scoop up net at the very least, but we All already the had energy. the attached to turn. All that energy is going to go away. Oh, no, you hate to see it. Those manual attachments for the past few turns going by the wayside, but you do get to save that Regigigas for another turn. Yeah, just denying that prize, extending the game, just setting up and trying to go again. Reggie Lecky now into the active spot. And now, because all of those energies went to the discard pile, the odds of drawing into them and being able to manually attach for the Gigaton break, very unlikely. So here comes Escape Rope now, bringing Coughing into the active so it can use its Ascension attack to get another Galarian Wheezing. This means that Charlie Kerr's option for an Escape Rope to get around Neutralizing Gas is no longer viable. We need Serena and Boss's orders from this position to bring up that Galarian Zigzagoon. That's important, but it also gives, uh, does the, puts the Reggie Alecki to the bench, so no more electromagnetic sonar mm. to find a trainer like that scoop up net to kind of stall out the game a little bit. And so Aiden has already adapted the game plan, heading off every strategy and every possible out against this severe poison neutralizing gas lockdown. Charlie Kerr Ultra Balls grabs that Reggie Rock. The Reggies are all fully assembled but we don't have the supporter in hand. Just a Marnie, no boss's orders, no, uh, nothing to get this Glaring Weezing out of the active. So it's just going to be five fresh cards and a little bit of disruption. It looks like Charlie's going to have to pass the turn after a choice belt. but Yeah, grabs the choice belt, puts it on the Regirock. This is the threat potential that Charlie Kerr employed in game number two. There is a Professor's Research in the hand, but Aiden, no doubt, is going to have a disruptive supporter of his own. Uh, Serena discarding a hide and dark, John Delia five. And now Radiant Hisuian Sneasler comes back into the fray. There is no path to the peak, so now that poison peak is boosting this damage to 60. And now Charlie Kerr is on a much shorter clock to respond to this lockdown. Game number three in the finals, and Aiden has finally gotten the dominant position that he wants for this matchup. I think we're going to see another professor's research here from Charlie, just digging for those specific cards on that specific turn. You need to Ancient Wisdom. More professor's research drawn off of that one. I see a scoop up net at the very least can try to extend denying prizes left and right. Reg Ice comes back to the hand. Reggie Alecki comes into the active spot. The, electromagnetic, uh, the electromagnetic sonar can still be used under the Temple of Sinnoh because that twin energy is still providing that single colorless. And now coming back into the hand, Charlie's looking at a boss's orders for next turn to get out of this neutralizing gas, maybe take down that Radiant Asuian Sneasler. I've had it discarded earlier on with the first professor's research. So now back in hand, but this is where Aiden, if he has a Judge or Marnie, can disrupt a little bit and make this clock even faster. Yeah, this is exactly what we saw in game number two, Jeremy, where every time Charlie Kerr used that sonar to get a out into the hand, it was just another Judge or another Marnie to shuffle that back into the deck. And Ooh. here it is, Judge once more to respond to the sonar. This is what the deck is built to do. There's seven copies of this effect. Four Marnie, three Judge. 
you have I, uh, ability lock in the active, you just play a Judge or Marnie every turn, and you should win, right? Your, your opponent just can't draw out of it. Yeah, there's no, the draws aren't real after shuffling the deck. <laughs> Reggie's, you know, you can draw cards with Reggie Drago. You're using Quick Ball to find the Reggie's that you're missing, but searching out individual cards that aren't Reggie's is certainly a tall order. After more severe poison, Reggie Alecki takes 60 damage, and it's back over to Charlie. Not looking very enthused about the current hand. I see another Alecki at the very least. Yeah, if I saw it, I would not be uh, enthused as well. Uh, a couple Reggie Pokemon that you already have in play, and is just forced to Electromagnetic Sonar sacrificing this Reggie Alecki in the active spot because coming back to your turn, it will be knocked out by poison. And because the bench is full, there is a chance that this follow-up Reggie Alecki is going to be shuffled into the deck as well. Charlie looking at maybe a Marnie here. Things are starting to slowly slip away for Charlie, and Aiden is building up a path to victory. And so after the, looks like the... All right, yeah, so it looks like the Marnie was grabbed. The Reggie Alecki is still hanging on with 10 HP. And again, the fact that there's no path to the peak as well is huge for this matchup. Yeah. Because the, the Radiant Suian Seasler is online constantly, and you don't have those extra turns that you want to keep the Reggies in the active and have them buy more time. After Charlie used a couple scoop-up nets to slow down these prize acquisitions, Aiden finds himself taking two at the very least. Regi Ice promoted to the active, and Reggie Lecky. And one more, the Regis Steel being shuffled back into the deck. And I think we're going to see a Marnie here. Hope to draw into some cards for the following turn. Because of the double glaring wheezing, escape rope is not an option. Absolutely has to be that other supporter. But for this time, it just needs, it's just a Marnie putting the hand back down to the bottom to draw five. And from this point, Charlie doesn't care about disrupting Aiden's hand. It's just about finding the proper sequence of resources to respond to this lock. Yeah, there is only one copy of Boss's Orders in Charlie's deck, and usually you kind of mitigate that with Serena being able to bring up Pokemon V, but Aiden has had the perfect game where you don't need to bench a Pokemon V, and because of that, it really limits Charlie's options, hoping for that escape rope, but Aiden having that switch into the Ascension, really applying a lot of pressure. Charlie Kerr going all in on whether he can find that boss's orders at the right time. It's not just about having the boss's orders, it's about being able to hold on to it for a turn after you get it from a supporter, not having that disrupted, also being able to assemble all the Regis at the right moment. Speed, lightning, energy just attached, doesn't draw because of Temple of Sinnoh, and there's the pass of the turn. Now I do see that boss's orders in Charlie's hand, so we'll have to see how things play out next turn because no disruption from Aiden, and here we go. Finally, Ancient Wisdom can come online. Severe poison on Reg Ice. He can boss his orders up a non-Galarian Weezing to turn off the neutralizing gas. Get the Ancient Wisdom. And is there anything else that Charlie Kerr wants to do here? This professor's research in hand manually attaches gift energy for turn, brings up the Radiant Hizui and Sneasler, and now Ancient Wisdom. Yeah, the first one of this game. A, attaching the energy to potentially the Regice and retreating, or no, just going with the full gambit on Regigigas. The Regice still hanging on once more with 10 HP. And this is oh, the no. timing, right, of the, of the Poison Peak throws this off. We're going into Charlie Kerr's turn. The knockout just happens without any response during Pokemon Checkup. Reggie Drago being looked at to be promoted into the active for Dragon's Horde. We can still attach to this with Ancient Wisdom. Well, we're still dealing with Aiden's turn. That was a headbutt tantrum, oh. taking the knockout on that Regice. <gasps> Aiden has the energy to retreat here, so another severe poison to stack the damage yet again. There's the attach and retreat. So this is the key sequence to keep up the neutralizing gas, keep this chain of poison going. Dark patch to attach to coughing. And the lockdown continues. 60 damage onto Reggie Drago. 
Energy Lotto being used. Top seven cards. Look for an energy to add to your hand. But Charlie Kerr now has this Reggie stranded in the active spot. Didn't want to promote the Reggie Gigas to have it be poisoned. Just put this in the active to be able to use Dragon's Horde if need be. Yeah, well, even with the Reggie Gigas, you still need another energy to attack oh, that's because right. of the Temple of Sinnoh. There's two twin energies, but they're just two regular energies now. And this all comes down to the fact that for game number three, Charlie Kerr has three Path to the Peak prized and has not taken any prizes yet. There's only one in the deck. Scoop up net to bring Reggie Drago back to the hand. Get rid of that poison. Reggie Gigas coming into the active spot. Needs one more manual attachment for a gigaton break. And do we have that energy in the hand? Uh, I... Can, can he attack? I don't think he can. Wait, wait, yeah, because the, the twin energy and is canceled out by the Temple of Sinnoh. Oh, yeah, you're right. Getting the prize card, I think it might be another Yeah, I don't think there was an energy in hand. Penalty. So he actually cannot take the knockout here. This, this has to seal it up. Yeah, the Temple of Sinnoh has been quietly waiting there, and... When you're at this point in the tournament to have two twin energies attached to the Reggie Gigas, you're like, There's, this has got to be enough energy. But no, <laughs> it's just not enough. And even if he had, the, there is no energy, as we can see here in the hand, to attach for turn to get the Gigaton break. So what a wild ride. Charlie Kerr taking that first game, Aiden taking the second game after fighting tooth and nail to get one single darkness energy. And now in game number three, it all came up roses with the early boost shake, the glary wheezings being all assembled alongside Radiant Azui and Sneasler, and Charlie Kerr being left with no way to get rid of the Temple of Sinnoh, making the time that he bought using scoop up net Right, to manually attach to the Reggie Gigas, not enough. That time is so short where Reggie can hang out in the active spot and buy time. And then when Aiden sensed that danger, went for the boss's orders, brought up that first Reggie Gigas, it had three, four energies manually attached, had to be scooped up. Yeah, it, it was rough. Uh, and because of that, just did not have energy left in the deck, really, to attach from hand. And I think now they're kind of going back, looking at the stream, seeing what card was taken from the prize cards. So oh, he already that. took the prize. Oh, I didn't even notice the, that. Yeah, already took the prize card. It, it's most likely going to be a double prize penalty. Yeah, I thought it would just and be, oh, no, the wheezing just goes back into no. the active. And <laughs> it's, all, it's all fine. But no, you, he announced the attack. He was desperate for that prize. Charlie Kerr knows that there is three Temple of Sinnoh in the prizes and really wanted to get himself out of this lock. Now, it is up to both players to really keep track of the board state. It is Aiden's Temple of Sinnoh, but Charlie is the one attacking, and anytime you get more information than you need, it, it's got to be corrected. Mm -hmm. And yeah, with the Temple of Sinnoh there, it was, it just, it just all happened so fast. We were just talking about how there wasn't enough energy on the Reggie Gigas. It came up into the active. I thought there was going to be one more attachment. It was just swing, taking prizes, and when you play as much Pokemon as these players do, when you announce your attack, you know that your prizes are coming. It's just an automatic grab, I think, at that point. But the judges are now conferring, making sure uh, exactly who is at fault here and uh, you know, it, what, the, uh, what the penalty is going to be. If there was any way for Glaring Weezing to win a regionals, this would probably be... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Struggling with the wildest bricks I think that anybody in the audience had ever seen and then you know not to you know you know winning on a technicality so to speak is just glared wheezing with that big top hat the oil baron of Galar saying oh yes quite you have no abilities <laughs> all right maybe not Adam but <laughs> <laughs> This, this is when you know things have gone completely off the rails, Jeremy. Uh, and Galeri Wiesig is certainly here in game number three within a stone's throw of claiming a regional championship after all of the churning and testing of the metagame. 
there comes a time, I think, in any meta where eventually it collapses in on itself, where players somehow get the notion, oh, you know, I don't want to play Lugia because there's going to be tons of mirrors or people are going to be countering Lugia too much. I'm going to play the second best deck. And for this regional, everyone wanted to counter the second best deck. There's a lot of anti-Mew out in the field, the Drapion, the Seal, the seal Stone, Eternatus, having these Darkness attackers and throughout everything, we end up in this situation with Reggie's and Eternatus VMAX going toe-to-toe -to -toe here in game three of the finals. I just saw the judge grab a card out of the hand. Yeah, it was a choice belt going back into the prizes. Prizes are going to get shuffled up most likely. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll have to see. Yep, double prize penalty awarded to Aiden. That means one more prize card taken, and he will become the Charlotte Masters Division Regional Champion in the trading card game. And now the prizes are being put back. Three path to the peak still missing from Charlie Kerr's response to this Temple of Sinnoh. And now Galerian Weezing stays alive in the active spot. That's another point uh, that we have to talk about as well. There's still two Galerian Weezing up and running for Aiden Koo's lockdown. Now, with the way the board is set up, it will take Aiden a couple turns to, to take a knockout. Mm -hmm. But at this point, it is almost kind of inevitable. So after it goes back over to Aiden, he can announce severe poison. The Radiant Hisuian Sneasler is still there, still available. There's always a chance that you can just boss something up, but just goes for the Marnie instead for disruption. Charlie probably kind of gave it away that there wasn't an energy in the hand anyway to attach to Reggie yeah. Gigas. But because of the timing, <laughs> again, it's so specific with that Poison Peak boosting the damage of Poison by two counters. Even if you get the manual attachment on the Reggie Gigas, this is a poisoned Pokemon in the active spot that will naturally go down as time passes. It means that Charlie Kerr has to try to take a knockout and somehow pivot at the same time. And it just doesn't work. There's Quick Ball getting rid of Reggie Alecki. We have to find Reg Ice just to have access to Ancient Wisdom if it ever becomes available. Yeah, there, we got to find one more attachment to even use Gigaton Break. There's only one energy left in the deck, uh, and Charlie is going to draw the entire deck, it seems like, with this Professor's Research. Maybe just go for the deck out on stream. One, Close two, it three, out. four, nice. five, six, seven. One card remaining. Speed Lightning. And there is the concession. Aiden, who's with Galarian Weezing, Eternatus VMAX, I never thought I'd say that, has won the Charlotte Regional Championships and cemented his legacy. Now Radiant Eternatus can get one more win listed <laughs> on its pedigree. One more, before it the rotates. first win. <laughs> before it rotates, finally takes a win at the end of the E-Vlog. Listen. I've been right the entire time. Y'all <laughs> didn't believe me. Jeremy was the prophet of Eternatus. <laughs> he predicted this all along. He skipped ahead in the script. Yeah, yeah. Uh, congratulations again to Charlie. Unfortunate way how things ended there, but second place at regionals is going to net you some money, a medal, some championship points, most importantly. Day one, day two, top eight, and the finals were all filled with a lot of twists and turns, a lot of bumps, a lot of unexpected developments about how these games and matchups would play out. Um, this is, you know, for better or worse, a oddball regional. Yeah, uh, some would say toxic because, you know, uh, <laughs> Glarian Weezing is, is the winner. <laughs> I mean, my doubts about the deck have certainly been neutralized. Ooh, we're on a roll. Reggie's, after, you know, kind of grinding away over the course of the entire season, did find its way into the finals, and that is also an accomplishment in and of itself. I, I think it's first time in the finals, uh, if I may be correct, and we actually kind of started when Reggie Gigas came out and all those cards. Mm -hmm. We were kind of looking at the Japan tournament where it actually took it, like, it won the tournament, and we're like, oh, this deck's actually real. It's still real. Yeah, players have been grinding on this specific archetype for so long, demonstrating that it is just so reliable and consistent. It's just good old faithful that so many players love, and the, having that fun sequencing of the Regis and the Ancient Wisdom and being a single prize deck gives you a lot of flexibility into the meta.
and, you know, I'm glad that it finally lined up to at least take it all the way to the finals. Big congratulations to Charlie Kerr for piloting, uh, I would say, a fan favorite archetype at this point, all the way to this point. But he turned it as VMAX. Galarian Weezing, we saw a deck that was basically all Galarian Weezing at one point already demonstrated its power the potential for that neutralizing gas especially against like lost zone decks and the meta finally settled into this specific makeup where having the lockdown of the glaring wheezing and the threat of a darkness attacker with the turner to femax and drappy on to cover mew and other matchups like that finally all lined up for it Listen, it all really came down to that game to Aiden doing everything possible to get that dark energy and the cards needed, pulled it out, and you now just won a regionals. Let's go ahead and join him along with Chip and see how he's feeling. That's right, guys. I'm standing by with the Charlotte Regional Champion, Aiden Koos, getting the win with Eternatus VMAX. Let's give him a round of applause out there in the crowd. Congratulations once again, Aiden. Thank you. <laughs> How are you feeling? What's going through your mind? You are now uh, a regional champion. God, I'm just shocked. I mean, I had no idea that I was going to make it this far. I I mean, I, I was on Lost Ray the entire week. I was thinking about it. I was thinking about different techs, really bad cards, actually, like Meta Champion. Oh, like, gosh. I, and, and actually, Thursday night, I got in. Uh, one of the people I was staying with, Dylan Gunn, he had told me, he was playing E-Turn, and one of my friends, Raymond Long, he was also just like talking to me about E-Turn. I was just like, dude, that deck, that deck sucks, dude. Like, I am not playing that deck. And then, like, I really just sat down and thought about it, and I'm just like, E-Turn really doesn't lose to anything other than, Lugia's kind of a, like, they draw out of it, they win. And Arctura with, like, Collapse Stadium is pretty unfavorable. Reggie's is also weird, but I've never played the Reggie's matchup until I played Kerr on stream in round 13, was it? Right. Like, I, I had no idea what I was doing. I went up to, like, a bunch of my friends, I was just like, what do I do? Like, what what, what am I supposed to do in this matchup? I, do I just go like wheezing and that's it? I mean, it seems just like a really weird matchup and still even like after I played it, like I still just think, I, I'm still just wondering like, what do I do in that matchup? Yeah, I mean, it definitely seems like a, a very interesting strategy you have to employ. Do you go with just the wheezing? Do you have to pivot into the Eternatus at some point? Of course, that does run the risk of it just eventually being KO'd, which is what we saw in game number one. Speaking yeah. of which, you lose game number one. Things seem a little risky, I mean, you obviously had the little miss sequence of things there with the ultra ball, the coughing that couldn't evolve. How did you come back from that, just mentally? Because obviously, I mean, there's a little bit of a mistake. How do you get your composure back in order to move forward in the game? Yeah, I mean, I think games one and two, I was just like, I was really sketch of the matchup, I thought. I was just not confident. I was really, like, my mental was not, like, there. I played really bad games one and two. I, I think game three, I definitely improved my play. I think I played a lot better. Um, Drew a lot better as well. <laughs> oh yeah, turn one thing. boost shake. Yeah. How <laughs> which, about it, huh? Which that, that just got me like, I was just like, okay, we're in this. Like I was looking at my opening hand, I'm just like, what am I gonna do? Maybe bench coughing, Marty next turn. And then I'm just topped like a boost shake. I'm just like, okay, we're, we're, we're there, we're there. <laughs> Sometimes that one key card just falls into your hands miraculously. Speaking of uh, cards falling into your hand or ones that maybe were not falling into your hand, game two. No darkness energy for <laughs> you. You had to sky seal stone or four seal stone, excuse me, for the darkness energy. You drew so many cards. What's going through your mind in that moment when you're just looking for one simple piece that you play so many of? Uh, I actually looked into the audience. I was just like, I was like, everyone was just like looking at me and they were just like, bro. I mean, it was, it was like that. I mean, I was drawing so many cards. I'm just like, where's my darkness energy? Where's, where's my energy? And I finally was like, okay. I told, I told Charlie, I was just like, you know what's gonna be really funny? Watch this. And then I just grab the dark energy off of my Forest Seal Stone and attach it to my Weezing. Yeah, you get any card out of your deck. And then such, I mean, such a powerful effect. And you use it to just get a, a basic energy. But it's what you needed. And it's what got you into that game and what allowed you to come back from kind of a tough spot because you whiffed the turn one Ascension as yeah. well in that game. Uh, I mean, was there any point in that game too where you thought, I've lost this tournament. This tournament's done. I'm going to be second place. The the entire game. Like, honestly, the entire game, I just thought that. And then he flips over his cards, and I'm just like, okay, well, I guess we're going to game three. I guess I get to stay here a little bit longer. I mean, and then sometimes that's just how the tournament goes. I mean, absolutely. We talked about game three a little bit. You get the perfect top deck on turn one. Get that boost shake. Get the coughing into the active. You're feeling good. And your opponent, unfortunately, prized three path to the peak. Did not have the counter stadiums in order to get out of that Temple of Sinnoh, which really massively slowed him down. Did that become apparent to you a few turns in that 
you know, there was something missing from Charlie's normal strategy. Yeah, um, Charlie actually did not even know that the pass surprised. So like, I was thinking the entire time that he had pass in his deck and he was just getting really unlucky. And he was just telling me, he was like, oh, I just can't draw a path. And I'm just like, oh, it's really unfortunate. And then like on the very last ball search that he goes in, after, like before playing that last research, he was just like, you wanna, I was like, I, I was like oh, did you whiff the path again? And then he's like, no. It's it's more it's more deep than that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did I whip? It wasn't there to whip to begin <laughs> yeah. with. Just the one single path. And it's what's funny as well. Three were in his prizes. The one that he had left was in his opening hand. And the way his opening hand played out, there was a line where he could have quick balled it away to get a Reggie in play, but chose to end up playing the Marnie. So we were looking back here like, oh no, he doesn't know his path surprised. He might just quick ball his only one away. Obviously things go the way they do. The temple sticks, slows things down. Had that little bit of a judge ruling happen. Of course, Charlie unable to attack with the two twin energies because of that temple of Sinnoh. I mean, such a strong stadium card, not only for Reggie's, but Lugia, which is obviously a big part of the meta. Just real quick, tell us about some of your other games. Did you have anything super memorable happen to you this weekend? Any of your Lugia matchups? Did you hit any of those weird Duraludons with Collapse that you were so scared of? I was actually extreme. I was testing against like a lot of my friends were playing Duraludon with four catchers, and I'm just like, this deck, is, this deck does beat Lugia, which I was very surprised. And I really didn't want to hit them because they play Collapse <laughs> Stadium. And I was actually able to dodge all Duraludon this weekend. I didn't play a single Duraludon, which was like, it, it, it worked out. I only got one loss in the tournament. We take those, absolutely. I mean, what a run. Only one single loss. Congratulations, Aiden. You are now a regional champion. Got anything in mind? Anything you're going to do to celebrate this? Um, probably catch my flight in a little bit and uh, maybe get some Bojangles while I'm here. In, uh... <laughs> as a North Carolina native, I love to hear it. Ch yeah. Check out the cookout as well. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much, Aiden. I uh, appreciate your time and I hope you have enjoyed this tournament obviously getting the win congratulations super happy to see it with the Eternatus nonetheless we'll take a quick little break but while